It's Monday. Welcome to the Prepare to Repair show. I am your host, Steve Suarez, Plumber Steve. Joining me in studio is Jerry Robb with Hot Rods House of Powers. He is back with me with a, uh, well, we're going to talk about, uh, you're popular these days. <laughs> Gas prices being uh, $4 a gallon, possibly 5 Um People are going to be definitely looking at ways to increase fuel economy to save money or as much money as they can at the pump. What, what, what are you seeing on your end, man? Oh, man, it's crazy with these gas prices nowadays. You know, um, we've got a few tips I want to talk about. We have a few tips I want to talk about, trying to save our customers and our listeners some you know, money on fuel here. Okay, that'll work. And also, we have a big announcement that's going to be coming up. You are going to be doing a uh, Mechanics Minute on the show. Yes, sir. I'm thrilled. It's going to be a recorded uh, tip of uh, coming out each week. Just little helpful tips for uh, homeowners and, you know, vehicle owners just to keep their car up and running and get it to the right people. I can't wait, Steve. All right. Well, what we're going to do right now is we'll touch on... Uh, just basically, let's dive in right here. The agony that everyone's feeling right now at the pump. Uh, what could people do to extend their fuel dollar? Oh, Steve, there's all kinds of things you can do. Um, you know, and very basic stuff such as you know proper air pressure in your tires, uh, keeping your car maintained, uh, tune-up, fuel injection cleanings. Uh, you know, anything as simple as, you know, taking that uh, bicycle rack off the roof of your car. I mean, that's that's drag on your car. That will definitely decrease your fuel mileage. Just the wind noise. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I I had a, I drove, a, I rented a vehicle, I think we were in Colorado. And it was the same vehicle that I had. It was a Tahoe. And I'm driving and I hear it just was given like a hum. No, it was just very annoying. Oh, yeah. And I look at it and it had a luggage rack on it my truck doesn't have that so and i was like okay that makes sense but i guess anything that's going to produce drag on your vehicle is going to be uh obviously make it less fuel efficient oh yes sir so now i wanted to ask you this um other than you know other than like the simple maintenance i mean because obviously maintenance is one of those things that a lot of people don't do I oh, mean, correct. they should be doing, but they don't do. And that goes with, with everything. I always preach on maintenance because maintenance is cheaper than replacement. Oh, for sure. You know, and that, that's where most of your emergency service comes from. Um, what can people do and what would you recommend? If, if you, other than tire pressure, other than that, is I haven't taken my car in. I haven't taken my car in in a while. And you're basically this. I guess the question is, it's kind of like, in my opinion, with a water heater. A water heater, people don't know how bad a water heater is because the loss is gradual. The loss of hot water or the it is gradual. It doesn't happen overnight where all of a sudden I had enough for everybody and now it's like I don't have enough for anybody. It's The loss is gradual over time. It's very small. Same thing is going to be for the, I'd say, the performance of your vehicle, it's not going to be something that it, sometimes I guess it will be. It can be, you know, dramatic, but other right. times it's something that is, it happens over time. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you know, take your car in, get it looked at, um, get your brakes checked. I mean, you know, a sticky caliper, uh, bad brake hose will cause drag, which, you know, of course, that's going to decrease your fuel mileage. You know, um, there's a lot of simple things you can do. Something as simple as a cabin air filter. You know, a lot of people, they don't think about it. How does that affect my mileage? Well, it makes your air conditioner work harder. The harder the air conditioner has to work, you're going to decrease your fuel mileage. So, I mean, there, you know, there's a lot of little maintenance things you can do to drastically increase your fuel mileage. I was going to say that with a drag of a caliper. I mean, just as simple as that, you'll notice something like that where you may get a lot of brake dust. You know, brake dust would be dirt. One wheel gets dirtier Correct. than the other, and it's kind of like, okay, well, why is that? Well, it could be one is prematurely wearing than the other ones. Exactly. And I guess here's what's going to happen with this. Now with gas prices going up, and people are going to now pay more attention to the performance of their vehicles and the operation of them, uh, 
unless they're just going to start just walking. You know? I mean, <laughs> the old I, horse and carriage, here we come again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I guess the question is, um, people are genuinely concerned with just taking it in and getting the right diagnosis, the right, uh, the right information that's going to just get them what they, the desired results. And at your shop, when somebody comes in, say I bring my car in and says, this thing is, I need it to run right. I, I commute a lot and I just want to make sure this thing is running as optimum as it can. So I'm not, you know, especially because I'm spending a lot of money in fuel. What, you know, what would you tell them? I mean, other than the obvious, but. You know, I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to say. Every car is going to be different. You know, now I'm scared to death here. Like I said, I'm scared <laughs> to death. You know, I've already taken it to a couple places, and it's like I'm scared to death. It's like you know, I'm like I don't know. I don't know enough to know what I don't know. I'm asking you, and it's like, what do you tell me? Well, I mean, you know, first thing we do, Steve, take it for road tests. Either you know, myself or my mechanics take it for a test drive. You know, if we notice anything odd, noises, whatever, you know, um, see how it runs. You know, then, you know, we bring it in, um, scan the computer system. You know, I want to check the suspension pieces, check the brakes, you know, check your tires. Um, there's just so many things that will just affect your fuel mileage. You know, I mean, you know, like higher mileage cars, even if your check engine light's not on, you should replace the oxygen sensors every 75,000 miles because that will really improve your fuel mileage. Now, what's an oxygen sensor? Uh, basically, what it does, um, it measures the amount of fuel and oxygen in your exhaust, and that tells your computer how to make adjustments. So, I mean, that really makes a huge difference in your fuel mileage. Now, what does the computer do in the car? Uh, basically, in the car, the computer controls everything. Um, I guess, you know, and we'll just call it the brain. Oh, I'm making you think here, brother. <laughs> I'm, making, <laughs> I'm making you think. You are going to explain this. You are going to explain this and today. today. We're explaining computers. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is it's it's in everything that we do. Oh, so right, exactly. And you know, people have heard there's a chip shortage. Well, it's like, okay, what do I need a chip in my car for? Well, what does that computer do to your cars? Um, basically, you know, in a modern car, the computer controls everything. I mean, from your fuel injectors to your tail lights. Um, it's, you know, t- today's modern cars are not like the older cars. I mean, if you, uh, and a lot of these newer cars, you actually have to, if you go to replace a tail light, it has to be programmed to work correctly. If not, it actually. Get out of here. Work. I swear. Get out of here. I swear. I'm not going, I'm not going to program my tail light. And all your, <laughs> all you modern F-250 owners, you will find that out. <laughs> Get out of here. There's oh, yeah. no, oh, that's, yes, that's sir. crazy. That is, that is crazy. Yes, but sir. the, and I also, I mean, I, w- I was wanted to talk to you about that is the sophistication of these vehicles now where, I mean, I know I go through continuing education for plumbing and, and I talk to different manufacturers to keep updated with their products that they have that are coming out. But that's why I asked you about the, you've got to continuously keep up to date with everything that's going on now because this stuff this oh, stuff yeah, is changing sure. with every model year oh yeah definitely I mean, definitely cars have changed even in the last 10 years between you know between 2012 and 2022 the difference is is just like night and day oh for sure everything is different completely different and you see that's why people are you know afraid it's like i got these electronics this is you know, this is, I don't know what this is. It's the fear of the unknown. And that's why I was saying, it's like, okay, the oxygen sensor, what does this do? And basically, all these components there are designed to make this vehicle run and perform top-notch. So it, basically, fuel economy is, some. They, the government puts on fuel economy standards for these vehicle manufacturers, correct? Oh, you're, yeah. Yes, you're sir. laughing at me. <laughs> Go ahead. Say what you got to say. Come on. <laughs> well, you know, the government, they're, um, you know, I'm not going to try and get into a rant about the government here, even oh, though I boy. could. Um, <laughs> Don't do you that. Know, they're, they're trying to control everything on these cars and, uh, you know, these manufacturers also. You know, it's not like the older days, even 10 years ago, you know, um, they don't want the average owner or repair shop to be able to work on these modern cars. That's why everything has to be programmed, like I was just you know explaining about the tail light. Um, you know, for uh, 
basically it's you know emissions reasons and everything else these modern cars it's you know they're they're so can't think of the word i'm trying to say right now (laughs) they're so sophisticated now that um you know the average mechanic cannot work on these cars so what happens like okay for example if i have a a newer truck say uh, 2019 okay say it's a 2019 2020 and I have an issue with it. So I would have to take it to the dealer in order to get certain things done. I can't go to you, my guy, or someone I've been using for, say, years and years on things. I can't do that? Um, honestly, that's going to be kind of a hit or miss. Um, there are certain modules, on, say, like a 2018, 2019, that only the dealer can program. Um, most shops don't have the equipment to do that. Now, I fortunately, you know, for my customers, I've invested a ton of money in the last couple of years in equipment. You know, I can actually, I can, you know, they call it flashing the computers. I can actually flash the computers in my shop. Um, so, I mean, we're pretty, you know, we can pretty much do that kind of a thing. Um, but the average shop nowadays cannot. So it's, uh, it's kind of hit or miss. I mean, you know, they can do like brakes or, you know, basic tune ups, stuff like that. But, um, you know, if, usually if there's an issue, they cannot take care of it. Don't, don't flash any computers, man. <laughs> You're going to get yourself in trouble. <laughs> Something don't, tells me we could end don't up Don't tell in, the wife. She's listening. <laughs> you, you could end up in jail somewhere. <laughs> you don't want you doing it. But I get what you're saying on that. So, I mean, it's 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 crazy how complicated this has all become. It used to be so simple. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, <laughs> and we're going to get back and talk a little bit more about cherry flash in a computer. <laughs> Sounds good, Steve. Can't wait. <laughs> oh, wow. Welcome back. Your dreams Welcome back to the Prepare to Repair show. I am your host, Plumber Steve, with RJ Grand Plumbing, and Jerry Rob with Hot Rods House of Power. And uh, as always, this, the Prepare to Repair show, is presented by Ferguson Supply Kitchen, Bath, and Lighting Showroom at 7950 West 185th Street in Tinley Park. Whether you're doing a minor facelift or a full kitchen and bathroom model, Ferguson has you covered. So do go out and check them out. They're an awesome place to go, especially if you need some mirrors uh, in your shop while you're working on those computers. <laughs> you know, so. We're not going to go there, Steve. No, no, no. That's a topic for another day, buddy. <laughs> uh, I love my guys over at Ferguson. They got an excellent show. we got to check them out. Uh, but, you know, before the break, um, we were talking about you know, like I said, you were, we were joking about flashing your computer, but when you're talking about that, it's if you've got to take this to, and these cars have these computers, they're sophisticated. Now, it's very tough to find a good mechanic. It's also tough to find a good computer person. And is it one of those things where you might have someone finding someone with both of those skills that are going to be able to handle the computer end of it, trace that, that gremlin down right. and <clears throat> also be able to fix it. Or is, are you going to need two different people to do that? Is it going to, you know what I mean? It's, you get people that are book, you know, I, I run into where they're book plumbers, but when it comes to applying it, they're, they were exactly. lacking. Right. Right. So, exactly. You see where I'm asking, oh, right? We get, yeah, we get that too. <laughs> I mean, uh, unfortunately, it's um, you know, it's very hard to find a mechanic that you know can work on the modern cars and the older cars, uh, and even with the modern cars. I mean, you know, a lot of these guys they can plug the scan tool in there, and you know, they get a trouble code, and uh, it's it's called a false code, which it could be a mechanical issue causing right. the problem, and unfortunately, they just, they don't have the skills to diagnose the mechanical issue. Right, and that's well. That that could be because Evan walked in and we was, and before the break, and he was he was right. He says, you know, I don't know if I want a computer <laughs> guy, you know, doing mechanical work on my on my vehicle because, well, I mean, again, it's there there are two that are, I mean, I guess they're not unlikely bedfellows. Don't get me wrong, but it's one of those things that they will go hand in hand. But certain people are they'll stop after after the computer or there's guys that are or people that are mechanical that don't want to touch the computer Correct. Anyway. it's it's almost like there's just okay i don't you know i'm more specialized whereas 
you know, finding people that are specialized in both may be a little bit more difficult. Oh, for sure. I mean, they're kind of a rare breed today. Um, yeah. You know, most, like I said, a lot of these guys nowadays are just, uh, it's one or the other. It's very rare to find somebody that can actually do both. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here, but, you know, actually, I do both myself. And uh, that's part of the reason we stay so busy. But um, a lot of these shops, you know, I, I hate to say it, but it's like they just, they cannot actually, they just can't do, work on both types of cars. Or if one car has an electrical issue, you know, they, just, they really cannot find it. Okay, so if that's the case, and it's very difficult to find a shop other than the dealer that can do this, what does that mean for someone who is looking around on, say, social media sites trying to find <laughs> somebody to help them because they think that's going to that's going to help them save money? I mean, they're putting themselves in some serious risk of damaging something. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I've. Uh you know, I, I kind of read through some of these sites on Facebook and other groups. You know, and you always see the one guy, you know, I'm a mechanic, will travel, you know, I'll come to your house with my bag of tools and fix your car. Um, That might be great, you know, for maybe a burned out tail light, not on a Ford pickup, but you know. Right. But, um, you know, most of these guys, they just, they don't have the skills. They're, uh, they're just kind of like, you know, jack of all trades that think they can fix, work on a modern car and they, just, they cannot do it. It's, it's extremely difficult. They may wind up making it again. They end up costing the customer even more money in the long run. Exactly. And honestly, I said this before. It There's ways that you're going to cut costs. There's there's ways to, all right, I'm going to budget my money. There's ways I'm going to, I'm going to skimp here. And Okay. <laughs> Brakes on my family's car <laughs> is not where I'm going to, you know, I'm going to cut from the budget. It's just one of those things that I'll oh, just exactly, study. Exactly. You, know? you know, I mean, it's just not something that you're going to do. Not if you like the person. Right. You know right. what I mean? But, you know, again, it's, it's, it's amazing just how sophisticated everything has become. And I think this adds to more of the anxiety that people are going to have going forward as they start having, uh, they're having issues. You know what I mean? It's just, what do I do? It's okay, I go to the dealer. People are automatically thinking that the dealer prices are outrageous. And then you may have a wait time if, if it is a... Uh, if it turns out to be something. Oh, correct. And not only that, but even nowadays, say something happens, they may not even have the parts. That, well, parts are a huge issue for everybody. Um, you know, from small repair shops uh, to dealers to, you know, plumbers, electricians, everybody. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's, um, there's definitely a lack of parts right now. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, some customers understand and some don't, you know, Um it's, you know, it's like uh, we're kind of stuck in the middle, you know, where um, if our supply warehouse tells us, hey, you're going to have something in two weeks, we tell our customer that, three months later, it's not there, we're the bad guys. But, I mean, unfortunately, everybody is dealing with this. Well, I've told people, I said, you know what, you want to lose, you, people will lose their minds over it, at, and you're yelling at the wrong person. Nowadays, we need to have patience, you know, when you go to a restaurant, when you go to you know, getting certain things done. You got to understand the environment or the world we live in right now. And, and that's what I said. There was, you know, there's restaurants that, um, like one of them was Zap Taco. I was talking about talking to them and they were saying that, you know, they, they're short staffed like everybody else. They were, you know, having trouble. And I said, you know what? Okay. So you come, you go to a place like that, you have a drink, you're going out to relax anyway. <laughs> so if it takes you a little bit, a little bit longer, have a drink. Relax, enjoy the atmosphere, you know, enjoy the company of the person that you're with and, you know, your food will get there when, you know, when it does. Now, if it gets there and there was issues, but okay, that's another story that you can say so. But I oh, mean, exactly. if it takes a little long, a little patience, you know. Oh, for sure. For Again, sure. If, if there's parts that you're waiting on parts, there's nothing you could do about it. And, and that's, like I said, it's hitting everybody. It's not just hitting any particular industry. But again, I mean, one of the reasons why uh, we had... Uh, the Ram uh, ProMasters, and we had, you know, f a few of them for our fleet, and what had happened is we were, um, we had a couple of things that had minor issues with them, you know, just uh, just using them, you know, just it being in exactly. service, right? <laughs> um, and they had to go in for routine maintenance, things like that, and it would take a while because we would go to the dealer and take it in because... You know, all the stuff that the packages that we got and they would take a little while because they were in the order they were received. So there was passenger cars and other vehicles ahead of us. 
and we were a commercial vehicle. So what we did was, you know, because of this, we can't have our vehicles down. We went over to the Mercedes-Benz dealer in Orland. And they were offering really good deals at the time on this when you can actually get vehicles. But the, the, the attractive thing to that, in my opinion, was they have their own commercial, uh, they have their own commercial dealer, oh, own nice. commercial mechanic, nice. own Very commercial nice. end. So it's all commercial vehicles. They're separate. So they're, this way, when you have that, it minimizes your downtime and they're able to get you in, provided there's parts, but they're able to get you in and out of there as much as you can for those dealer things that are under warranty and so forth. We've had a lot of recalls on, on vehicles. Have you noticed that? Have you, have you heard uh, people complaining or saying anything about that? Just a lot of recalls on vehicles? Uh, minor things, but yeah, they're minor, just, you know. Pretty much minor things, you know, yeah. pretty much anymore. Um, Nothing outrageous, but it's know, just, you know. I've actually seen quite a few airbag recalls. Um. For the life of me, I cannot think of the name of the company, but uh, there's there's like two companies that make the airbags pretty much for everybody, whether it's a Toyota or a Honda, you know, Ford van, whatever. But um, there's actually an airbag recall going around for a while. Um, other than that, not, you know, a whole lot of, nothing major, to be honest with you. Yeah, these were minor, they, and, but the cool thing is, is when we took them in for oil changes, they were able to, you know, remedy them and get that taken care of. Oh, nice. But, you know, one of the reasons why we changed over was because of that and because of the you know, they were given really good deals on these vehicles. So it's like, you know, I mean, and everyone was saying, it's like, oh, you got these Mercedes Benz. No, I, I they got a good deal. I mean, the deal that we got were very, 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 and I could sell you as many varies, were very, very enticing. So they, they made the other one, they were comparable to what the other ones were. And so, I mean, again, having the service department was there, so having them not down. But that's why I was getting, you know, kind of tying that in is when you are a, a person who is, uh, who has a person that they like, that this is my guy, this is my mechanic, this is my, you know, my, my place that I've taken it. And now you're, you're going to make the vehicle in such a way where you're going to pull it out of the hands of people that I trust on this, then that's... That's kind of disheartening a little bit, I think. You know? Oh, it is for sure. It is for sure. But I mean, uh, you know, unfortunately, if you have a newer vehicle, I mean, you have to go to you have to go to the people that can repair the vehicle for you. Um, you know, it's like you know, if you if this guy's been your mechanic for the last fifty years and all he can work on is a you know nineteen seventy eight Ford pickup truck, I mean, he's not going to be able to service your modern vehicle, and um, you do have to go somewhere else, unfortunately. Okay, so say I bring my. My 1978 uh, Ford Pinto over to you, <laughs> okay, with that six cylinder, and I want you to get that hot rodded. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> well, the first thing we're going to do, Steve, is take that Ford motor out of it. <laughs> I thought basically you would say, you need to get out of here with that. No, the reason I'm laughing so hard is we actually have a, it's not a 78, we have a 76 Pinto on my schedule that's coming in. So you can't even say no, anything bad say about anything. it. I can't even say anything about this. He's probably listening. <laughs> you know, I use that when I get people calling me up about my used car warranty, and they ask what the year and make. Oh, I yeah. said, yeah, yeah, I've got a 78 uh, Ford Pinto. Is it still covered? And then the guy goes, well, let me check. How many miles does it have? I go, are you serious? We're still going to keep going? <laughs> That's something I'd like to talk about in a future day, too, is these uh, so-called extended warranties. Oh, I get them all we, the, the phone We calls. actually, you know, we do quite a few aftermarket warranties through my shop. And okay. a lot of these, they're not legit. I mean, uh, they will not cover anything. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? Tell me about those. I mean, because honestly, I didn't I didn't even think about that. And, oh, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of aftermarket warranties. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. Some are great. They're fabulous. Okay. You know, you have like... Uh, you know, I can't really think of the name of the warranty companies right now, but there's a few bad ones out there. So Actually, if a customer a calls you and they ask you, it's like, okay, I've, I've got this this warranty. They'll, you'll be able to guide, and guide them and give them right. some information. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I mean, uh, perfect example, last summer we had a guy come in, he bought a trailblazer, paid three grand for the extended warranty. Uh, some little used shyster car a lot he bought it from. And you know they in the so called you know in the warranty it says we'll we'll cover this we'll cover that everything else blah blah blah. Um, the guy's engine developed a ride knock basically needed a new engine put in, gave the guy a price on it. 
He says, well, I got this warranty. So we call the warranty company up, and they're like, absolutely not. We don't cover that. Really? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, so what was the actually, point of the warranty? Basically, it's to make more money off the car. You know, I so, mean, uh, it was like an additional three thousand dollars they charged for this warranty. What does it cover? Basically, it didn't cover much of anything. Um, I mean, you have to really read the fine print wow. on these warranties. Well, you know, I've run into that I, with. Uh, I was just going to say these home warranties with home warranties, yes. and some of these home warranty companies they have they have to get certain people to do their work because of the fact is they don't. It they don't pay anything, correct? And they're they're getting, they're just really getting whoever will take it, right? And when any work that needs to be done, people are wind up waiting, and because we've had people call, oh, I, my home warranty will cover it. We don't work with home warranty companies because of that. It's just they, again, you're the one without hot water. They're the one making the financial decision, right? You know, I look at that like when you're going to the doctor. If you have a broken arm and they tell you, okay, it's going to be this price, you're going to pay it because you are feeling the pain of the broken arm. Correct. If you have a broken arm and then you tell the insurance company, okay, it's this much for a broken arm. You know what? That's high. Let me shop it around. You're sitting there, your arm's split in half and you're just, you know, they're, they're shopping this around. Because they can't feel a thing. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. They're not the one feeling the pain. Exactly. But yeah, I've, uh, I've run into that. I, you know, again, we don't deal with it on that and because of the issues with that but a lot of people they that seals the deal for the sale whether it be for a home or for a uh for a vehicle but they need to check what do they what would you say in, that you found and i don't know your experience or what your knowledge is of the uh extended warranty uh companies what would you say to look ask check what would what would what should people look out for um i mean really you know if you're gonna buy a used car with an extended warranty uh I guess my biggest suggestion would be read all the fine print on the warranty, no matter what brand warranty it is, through, you know, through the company. Um, cause you know, it, like I said previously, it's, you know, a lot of these warranties, you know, if in very, very fine print, they will say, we don't cover the engine. We don't cover the transmission. We don't, you know, they, they basically what they want to do is they cover anything that's under like 50 bucks. You know what I mean? They so they don't, don't want to cover like drivetrain. It'll be listed as right, drivetrain. They don't want to cover drivetrain. Um, anything electrical, you know, it's uh, it's kind of it's pretty much a scam. Well, years ago, I'm going to tell you this story because this this aggravated me, and <clears throat> I was younger at the time. This was uh, my wife had a um, seventy eight Pinto. No, it wasn't a seventy eight Pinto. Okay, <laughs> we sold that. You know, <laughs> funny sold st- that years ago. <laughs> funny story. When I was driving, I was drag racing a Pinto down. Down Cicero <laughs> Avenue at 79th Street at 2 in the morning. Cop pulled me over for speeding. Not only did I lose to a Pinto in a Ford Thunderbird, I got pulled over. At that point, it's like, you know what? Just go home. Just Joke's just, on you. Just, just go home and end this night. It's just a horrible night. But anyway, my... My and today on Street Outlaws, we have Steve and his Ford Thunderbird up against it the couldn't Pinto. Get out of, it couldn't get out of its own way. I could run faster than it. It was four different colors, you know. Oh, there's a story behind that. It's hysterical. Anyway, um, but my wife had a, uh, she had a, a 91, um, 91 Pontiac Sunbird. And she bought it new. And this was like 92. And what happened was um, her calipers froze up. Okay. Gotcha. Calipers froze up and ate the rotors and um, ate the pads. So we took it in for a warranty. Took it into the dealer for the warranty because she still uh, had it under warranty. And you want to hear the rest of the story? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to take a quick break and I'll tell you after the break. Lay it on us, Steve. <laughs> Fire department. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out. <laughs> Back to the Prepare to Repair show. I am your host, Plumber Steve with RJ Grand Plumbing. Uh, back with me is Jerry Robb with Hot Rod's House of Power. And uh, we were talking off the air about my um, my fantastic uh, um, <laughs> Thunderbird. Thunderbird. <laughs> 77 Thunderbird. Sounded pretty slick, Steve. <laughs> oh, it was bad. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to finish telling my story about the... Uh, 
about the the Sunbird. Oh, do tell. That was the first car. She loved that car. And like I said, the calipers froze. And they said, okay, well, the calipers are covered under warranty. Before the break, we were talking about that. I said the uh, the calipers on my wife's uh, car that she had was, uh, it froze up. And they said, we took it to the dealer. And they said, yeah, it's, it, they froze up and they covered under warranty. I said, okay. But the rotors and the pads were not because they were determined to be wear items, not covered under warranty. So I asked a logical question. You know, I actually put some thought into this. You know, I was younger at the time. I was probably in my, you know, early 20s. And I asked, you know, a question. I put together a thought like they told me in school to do. I asked, well, if the caliper is connected to the pads, which connect, grab onto the rotor, as they explained it to me, the rotor is where the brakes connect onto where the front wheel is. I asked, well, shouldn't the part all be covered considering your part under warranty seized up which therefore caused damage to my parts which were abnorm- which were war I should say um, prematurely yeah yeah you yeah you would think but that's not how the warranty reads I said okay that doesn't make sense why is that not covered I got the double talk and the double talk and wound up buying, uh, <clears throat> wound up having to pay for pads and rotors. It's it's very frustrating because it's when you think you have a warranty, like you said, come down to the fine print. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it comes down to the fine print. It really it. does. And it's it's disappointing because you you think you have this protection, and and you don't. So I guess the moral of the story is the. The warranty or anything that you get is only going to be as good as the company that is backing it. Exactly. And that's what I always tell people. It's, you know, and this was a dealer that, you know, that this was their policy. And again, it's, it's where, it's where you're cut and dry, which again, pads and rotors are a wear item and they're not covered because it's, well, basically you, and I see where they, where they came from that, but this was a... An exception, I guess. You know what I mean? This, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This was, uh, you know, uh, extenuating I, circumstances. Well, if like, you, will. you know, in that circumstance, Steve, um, it kind of, that would kind of depend on the dealership, you know, slash or pair shop that did it for you. I mean, uh, yeah, this was at a dealer, and it's like I said, it was disappointing. Oh, I'm sure. You know, and, and she liked that car. So. I mean, that was her first car. It was a little birdie. She liked it. Nice. So, but, um, you know, but hey, yeah, that's cool. I mean, it was just, it was like one of those things where it said, I'll never buy another car from you. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And, and it's experiences like that. You right. know what I mean? It's it's just, I'll never buy that. I'll yeah, never it's buy kind it. of funny. I had, a, I had a friend of mine, buddy, uh, I won't say the name of the dealership, Pontiac dealership again. Uh, he bought a brand new 97 Firebird and I uh, had an issue with it. It had a um, runnability issue with the engine. Okay. So he actually he dropped it off, went to work, and uh, he declined the work because they wanted to charge him money, even though it was still under warranty. So he goes to pick the car up, and the car won't start. He pops the hood, all the spark plugs are out, all the plug wires are off it, and he was just livid because I mean, obviously it ran, he drove the car in, it ran there, it was just it was going in for warranty work, right? And uh, I mean, some of these dealerships they just they don't care about the customer once you know once. Once you get hand them that check for the car or make that payment, I mean, uh, even if it's under warranty, they just they really don't care about it. Yeah, check this. Basically, check the service department. Mm-hmm. Check once you get done, and you, you're going to buy that. Once you're looking to buy this vehicle, check the service department. Check and make sure they have that is as good because you're going to wind up seeing them, especially if you buy. Like when we bought our vans, they had oil changes, tire rotations. There was packages that you can buy that. Uh, and, and warranties on it that they would cover, which, okay, I mean, it would make sense. You want to make sure that it's all going to be covered. And where I bought our ProMasters from, they were fantastic on it. I mean, the only the only thing I had was, well, it's mine were commercial vehicles, and I had to you know wait in line, which I should. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it, the line is shorter if it's at a commercial, uh, if it's at a commercial dealer rather than 
a dealer that services everybody. Oh, for sure, for sure. So I mean, that's it's not an indictment on them. It's more or less of you know, it's like okay, you got to you get in, and there's more people ahead of you. Whereas in the commercial vehicle area, you may not have that many. Oh, exactly. So, but right. um, but yeah, it's it, again, it's it all comes down to asking questions, doing your due diligence, and the salesperson may be great. But one thing I've noticed, and we get these with service calls too, is it happens all the time. Is the sense of urgency is great until it's all completed, the sale is completed. So if they call us, it's like, oh, it's an emergency. We need to get this done, like because we've had some uh, maintenance or management companies call us for work, and the person that calls us in, it's an emergency. They need to do it. Once you do the job and the sense of urgency is gone, then you call to get paid. Now, all of a sudden, it's, all right, well, they're no longer handling it because they they're it's done on their end. Oh, I've right. got to contact somebody else who is giving me the runaround about it because, well, the sense of urgency is no longer there. And, and it, it comes down to, like I said, when you take it to a dealer, and I'm going to tie that in, whereas if you go to a dealer or go to a place and... They sold you, you got one person selling you something. Well, they're done with their end. They sold you whatever it is. Oh, right. Now the repair or the warranty end of it is is not up to them. Now it's all up to you to deal with that end of it. And that may not be as good as the sales end of it. And he may he or she may be a great person or whatever, exactly. but they can't control what the other party is doing. Right. So you have to examine all aspects of that purchase because you are going to ultimately experience all aspects of that purchase oh definitely definitely so i mean it is as bad it is it is i mean you may have one where the salesman is you know real piece of work but the everybody else there is great is phenomenal right so it's you know it's it's one of those things where okay then you could look at it reverse okay i only have to deal with this person here for a little bit and the rest <laughs> of my experience is going to be great so i mean it, it, it's a catch-22 on both sides oh yeah for sure but you know looking at that it's it's again it's it all comes down to the research that you do and finding what's going to work for you and that's and i, I keep saying on this show it, it, you are the one that's stuck with the product if you don't do your due diligence and you don't ask the questions because ultimately, once they get the money out of you, you're done. You know, oh, yeah. the, you know the key <laughs> phrase, you know the key word and all that, right? <laughs> key word in that whole thing, you. And Yes, sir. <laughs> and again, no one loves you more than you. <laughs> so if you don't look out for you, then nobody else will. <laughs> nobody else will. So you need to look out for you and do your due diligence. Almost definitely. And obviously, when you're doing things, there's a collective you, meaning in the household and whatever, but you know what I mean as far as even your business. And there's a collective you. But realistically, you're, you're, you and yours are the ones that are, that are going to be dealing with this, the great, you know, the satisfaction of it or the, the negative part about it. And if you can control making it as satisfactory as possible and making it as pain-free as possible, then it may take a little bit more legwork, especially in this, uh, Especially these days, with all the information being right there at your fingertips. Oh yeah, you don't have to know everything. You just have to know, uh, you know, just the little things. Oh, I mean, a little research goes a long ways nowadays. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I wanted to, uh, you know, as we, you know, start talking about like research, I wanted to ask you as far as perceived price. If, you know, we'll kind of wrap up the show with that perceived price, and what I mean by that is. Perception of what a value of a, of a particular service or product should be. And I say that where there's people out there who don't, who just hear the price and don't listen to, because once it got to a certain price that was over their price point, they get angry, frustrated or whatever. Correct. But they don't, Correct. they don't listen to everything that needs to be done or what's being done for that value. So what they'll do is, you know, not all, but some will go and hit the social media reviews and say, oh, they wanted to charge me this and this was outrageous price. But how do you know that was an outrageous price? How well, do you know what's bad? I mean, exactly. 
you, you see what I mean? And some of it may be right, don't get me wrong, but some of it may be an indictment of a of a company or business or whatever that it may be unwarranted. You, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, there's a lot. Of, you know, there's a lot of companies out there too. A lot of shops. Oh, a lot of these. You know, these chain stores. You know, they'll advertise a ninety nine dollar brake job, which you know we all know you cannot get a brake job done for ninety nine dollars. You know, the pads are seventy five dollars. You know, and I'm sure they're not going to install them for free. Uh, but you know, they do that to get you in the door, and then next thing you know, they pull the wheels off. It's a thousand dollars, and. You know, that's how they get you in there is with a cheap $99 brake job or, you know, the $16 oil change, you know. Next thing you know, you come in for an oil change and they're, you know, they're handing you a list of $2,000 of repairs they want to do to your car. But, um, you know, unfortunately, that gives a lot of shops a bad name. But people, you know, they get drawn in by the cheap price. And, uh, you know, the work, it needs to be explained properly what's being done for this amount of money. And I, I think that's where people get confused, you know. Um, yeah, it's you know, it's it's one of those things where research and understanding, you know, getting the right getting the right people to explain to you everything that needs to be done. Now, again, I, I used the example of a of a brake job that the guy I knew a while back was going to have on his van. He got upset because he thought six hundred dollars for this brake job was expensive, and I'm like, well, again, perceived value. Was that six hundred dollars for just brake pads and and that's it? I mean, for a standard you know Ford you know vehicle, I guess you know ten years ago and this was yeah this was like ten years ago that okay I mean that, that would be kind of high that is kind of high oh yeah right but I mean when you start thinking about okay what else was he doing exactly what was being done for six hundred dollars come to find out there was all these parts being re- it was a complete brake job and. I think the parts on it were close to four hundred dollars. So the guy was giving him like you know the labor was just he was actually getting a killer deal on it. Exactly, and that's what I mean. It's do you know enough about it? And that's why I mean, find out what what's being done so you know exactly oh, what yeah. you're getting. Because I've had it where and I've been on the other side, and we were just talking about off the air. I said I've had it where I've gotten prices. And then somebody gave me a ridiculous thing, and they, they, they were throwing the lines at me. And I said, okay. I said, does that sound right to you? And then they look at me. I'm like, I go, you really want to do that? Because the thing is, being in the trades is because when you get that kind of like sleazy vibe and that sleazy type salesperson like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's one in every trade. Oh, for sure. And that's what I told him. I said, well, because the thing is, you do that to me. You're going to see someone in my trade like that. And they're going to come and see you when you really, really have your back against the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. And karma. Yes. You get what you give in this world. Yes, sir. So I, that's why I told him. I said, you will see someone from my trade. And they're not going to be as nice as me. And be straightforward <laughs> and be honest. They're going to go over there and they're going to see you're in a weakened position. Kind of like you're seeing me. And they're going to come and get you. Well, I'm not doing it. Okay, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> you know, and I just made sure I, I, I put that point out there. Oh, yeah. It happens all the time. And they were, uh, you know, th- th- I got the look, but it's like, you need to let people know that you know things. Oh, for sure. You, I mean, you know, the main thing is, you know, if something's not being explained to you properly, don't be afraid to ask questions. Ton of questions. You know, ton ask of questions. why it's $600. What's being replaced? What's the labor? What's the parts breakdown? You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Right. There is no stupid questions because exactly. you know what? If you don't understand it, have them explain it to you again. Exactly. If you still don't understand it and they get frustrated, then let them get somebody else to do it. You're paying the bill. I mean, this is not hard. You're paying the bill and you want to understand this to a point where it's like, okay, it makes sense. And sometimes it's a communication error where a guy who does this all the time or a woman who does this all the time versus a man or woman who doesn't, doesn't do this because they're not mechanics. They don't know how this stuff works. You need to bridge that gap, that communication gap, so they have an idea of what's going on. Oh, exactly. And when exactly. you when it's produ- well, once you cross that line and you get that communication, you b- break that barrier, you get uh, you get the results you want. And the more information you're giving, the better off you are, and the more the less the less room you have for misunderstandings with customers. Oh, for sure. So, and that's why I say about the uh, about because again, it may not be high, and a price is not determined by 
it's determined by the vehicle, the job at hand, the um, the house. It's going to oh, determine right, the right. job. It's not determined by what your budget is, unfortunately. I mean, it doesn't make it expensive because it doesn't fit your budget. It's just it's 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 bad that it doesn't. I mean, that it, you're in that predicament, but that doesn't make it bad. And I just think certain people may go unfairly in their in their emotional, you know, oh, yeah, you know oh, frustration yeah. that they go and they, they say some things about it. I see it on social media all the time. Oh, oh yeah, they're, sure. they're expensive. They're, sure. Well, how do you know? I mean, what is your extensive knowledge into what that's expensive? I mean, in the person compared to what the other person that came out, did they do exactly what the other person said they were going to do? Because there are people out there. And I say this like, you know, there's people out there. There's your good friends will tell you what you want to hear. Or not, your good friends will tell you what you need to hear. Your fake friends will tell you what you want to hear. Yes, sir. And there are companies that will tell you what you want to hear and set you up for future stuff down the line. A good company will tell you what you need to hear so you can get everything done correctly. Oh, exactly. Exactly. So, and that, uh, and I want, you know, with that, we're going to close the show on that. Uh, I want to thank our guest, Jerry, Jerry Rob with Hot, Hot Rod's House of Power. Fuel prices are rising. He is the man to see to get the best mileage out of that vehicle and stop paying that liquid gold or paying for that liquid gold. Also, head out to Ferguson Supply for all your kitchen, bath, and lighting appliance needs. Your dream kitchen and bathroom is as close as Tinley Park. Check out our website for more information on today's guests or listen to previous shows. Jerry, tip, quick tip of the week. I mean, this is all you, buddy. Gas four or five dollars a gallon. <laughs> quick tip. Uh, quick tips, you know, let's just... Two uh, seconds. Check the air pressure in your tires. It makes a huge difference. All right. So check out Jerry over at Hot Rods House of Power. Phone number? 815-320-6188. Or check out our website, www.hotrodshousepower.com. All right. I want to thank everybody for listening. Have a great week. We'll see you back here on Monday.